Thanks. Andy Carruthers, I'm responsible for the uh, Corporate Data Cloud, which is the conflation of two separate Snowflake accounts, one for Refinitiv that we acquired recently, and also for the Corporate Data Exchange, which was the piece that uh, I was brought in a couple of years ago to uh, work on. Yeah, cool. So maybe let's start talking about the journey you've had with Snowflake. So I guess let's go back to a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago maybe, whereabouts did we start? Where, where was the starting point for us when uh, John and I uh, first were getting to know you and the, the use cases you had? So rather unusually, I had no ex uh, Snowflake experience whatsoever. So I landed a contract working at LSEC, uh, but with lots of Oracle experience, and I know that's a bit of a, you know, uh, another subject, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, I started with a blank sheet of paper but with an objective to take out what was a cottage industry for reporting. As over the course of seven weeks, starting from knowing nothing, uh, we built out a credible proof of concept that uh, delivered against the, the uh, core objectives. And in fact, we used that proof of concept, we eviscerated it forward, that now forms the basis for the uh, delivery into the uh, corporate data cloud. Yeah, so what, I guess in the early days, what was some of the, what was maybe the biggest challenge you faced as you were trying to, uh, you know, get up and running? Obviously, you tried the technology out, it was ticking the boxes, it was, you know, do, doing what we promised and you were getting some value. But what, I guess, what were the challenges, what were the, the blockers that you had to try and address to sort of really start to kick on? So I think the biggest challenge really is, is getting rid of some of the legacy thinking that comes with knowing a product very well for many, many years. So many of you out there will be very familiar with your core technologies and looking at Snowflake and wondering whether you can do the same as what we did. And the answer simply is yes. If you have good SQL skills and you have an open mind and are prepared to rethink some of your approaches, then you'll find that Snowflake is very eminently achievable for you and very quickly, perhaps more quickly than you think. I'm not just a fanboy about Snowflake. I really like the product, it's great. But the, it is so easy to start with and build out your competency. And what I would say is start with something simple. Don't expect to eat the elephant in one session, but start with a theme, work through that theme, and you'll find you'll discover a whole lot more about Snowflake than you thought existed. So I guess another topic I know we spoke about quite a lot in the early days was probably the security and governance side. Obviously, like a lot of organisations, you have a lot of uh, very sensitive data. Data is a valuable asset, but it's also something you need to protect. So uh, maybe a few comments on, you know, how we've maybe how we helped a little bit in terms of uh, ensuring the security of our data. But again, some of the the challenges that we had to we had to meet to, to give people confidence that this data was going to be safe and uh, was was easy to govern. Yeah. So there are two aspects to this. So the first one is actually embedding Snowflake as a product within the LSEG infrastructure. So that means talking to cybersecurity colleagues, making sure they're satisfied that we've got appropriate controls in place. And then we've got monitoring and alerting around those controls to make sure that we are compliant with the controls. Uh, and the second part is actually building a platform on top of the core product. So we were building uh, the, the corporate data exchange on Snowflake whilst embedding Snowflake within LSEG at the same time. So some of the challenges that we faced were around the guardrails for the network policy. So what is the allowable IP ranges? Do we restrict access to on-prem only, which is eminently doable, and that's what we've done? Or do we allow public internet access, which for one part of our, our uh, infrastructure we don't? Uh, so those were some of the challenges that we faced. There's one other thing as well that I made the mistake within the proof of concept was running everything with one role. But I do urge you, if you're gonna go the same route, please do give some serious consideration to your role-based access control because it does work subtly differently to other databases. So you can't grant entitlement directly to a user. It has to be done through a role. And that will impact your thinking going forward. And it, that's, the, that's the core deliverable, really, of this message is your role-based access control is critical to your success. Don't lift and shift. Take the opportunity to just rethink what you're doing in terms of implementing a cloud-based solution. Yes, I guess. <coughs>
<coughs> we have quite a lot of tools in the box for uh, the, the security and governance piece. So I guess what you're saying is uh, take a step back, maybe look at uh, what we've got there, yeah. work out what you can adapt. Again, our, our backs, uh, you know, it can be a tricky subject, but if you've already got entitlements, models or approaches, how can you adapt them? How can you take advantage of some of the things that we've got baked into the product? And I guess maybe over the last 12 to 18 months, you, you've been uh, leading the charge on some of the public preview uh, features uh, around that, you know, things like the tagging and, and various other things. So hopefully we'll, we'll keep adding to that. So I guess after that initial uh, evaluation, the POC, we agreed, you know, you, you were gonna move with the, the rest of the use cases. So I guess, what did you do then? What, what were the next steps about, you talked about maybe embedding it into the organization. So what was the, uh, what, what's happened for maybe for the next 12 months as uh, you were trying to get the, you know, get the momentum going as you were moving the use cases onto Snowflake? So part of the journey was to actually conduct a hearts and minds uh, operation, if you like, to, to showcase what Snowflake can do, what Snowflake can deliver in a pragmatic, practical way, always focused around successful business outcomes because people, the people who paid the money for us to do our job, they don't care that we, what technology is behind the scenes particularly. They just want to know that data is secure, is governed properly, that they can access the right data in the right time frame, that we treat that data with the, the due respect that it deserves and uh, totally compliant with regulations in force. But they also want to see what they can do with the data going forward. Now, many of us operate in siloed environments, and which was the theme from the earlier uh, presentation. And I don't doubt that everybody in this room has come across situations where you need data from finance or marketing, and you want to bring them together, but there are barriers internally. And what Snowflake has given us is the ability to ingest the data and in a controlled, governed way, make the appropriate data available to the right people in the right time. I think you've mentioned that a few times, you know, making sure you, uh, the stuff that you're going after early, they need to be good use cases that drive value. Uh, that value is then going to build the momentum and build people's confidence in the platform to do some of the things that we've, we've talked about in the, uh, in the early presentations. So that's great. So uh, I guess the cloud journey is well underway. You're trying to get, yeah, I know you've talked to me about the, <coughs> excuse me, the backlog of, uh, of use cases you're trying to get in. So I guess it's really uh, what next, what's the uh, sort of medium to long-term goals? How do you think you're really going to crack on with this? And, you know, you, you have got a lot of data, a lot of use cases you want to bring into Snowflake. What do you think is going to be uh, a critical thing to make sure that happens and it happens successfully? Well, I, we reached an inflection point probably three, four months ago where one of my risk colleagues, who's a business-focused colleague, he said, uh, we know Snowflake's secure. We're, we're totally comfortable with the platform. That hadn't always been the message, and it was actually quite a revelation, because at that point you reach an inflection point where you're suddenly trusted. Then you can start to have other conversations. So, for example, we're talking about a landing zone. So that's a centralized provision of Snowflake accounts throughout the whole of the infrastructure. We're also talking about a center for enablement. And that means that we have core competence, we have uh, skill sets, we have accessible people who can answer tough questions that maybe aren't self-evident right at the outset. So we're establishing communities of practice, training guides, etc., etc. And this is all part of the maturity of Snowflake within LSEG. I mean, Andy mentioned the, the mountain of work, and it really is a mountain of work. I kind of liken it as standing at the bottom of the Hoover Dam with a crack at the top, and it's just about to break. Uh, and that's really a reflection of people coming to us and saying we want to onboard our programs into this common platform so everybody gets the benefit of these data sets. Okay, I mean, uh, centre for enablement, centre of excellence, uh, whatever. I know there's debate about what you should actually call it, but I guess, no, I guess it's yes. probably worth pointing out, I mean, you're one of a number of line of businesses uh, across LSEG. So again, I guess if we're going to really address that data silo, challenge that was called out before. Uh, I guess it's important that you do share best practices across uh, those teams where you can. And again, that's not always easy in large organizations. So maybe that's uh, definitely something that everybody should think about, if they, especially if they're in a more, a larger, more complex organization, you know, there'll be common patterns that can be shared uh, across the board. So, uh, okay, well, I guess, uh, we've kind of gone through the journey. Uh, maybe if we, there's a little bit of a wrap up, uh, given where you are at the moment, 
with the stuff that we've got in the box, you know, the stuff that's uh, available to you. What, what, I guess, what excites you about Snowflake now? And you know, given some of the roadmap stuff that you know we've got coming down the road, what are the uh, what are the new features that have come out in the last few months? Maybe that are uh, you know you're looking forward to getting your hands on going forward. Well, Andy, I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> Anybody would <laughs> think that we might have prepped that, but yeah. uh, let's see. No, but seriously, uh, I'm struggling to keep up with the new features. That's just a fact. Um, so please, who, whoever the product managers are, stop putting new features into our <laughs> port up. It, it, it's, a, it's a joke. It's a nice problem to have. It's a high-class problem to have. But over the past, well, even a few weeks, um, Object tagging has the potential to be a significant game changer because it means that our business consumers can come into Snowflake and they can search by a tag. They don't have to know that a particular attribute belongs in a particular object. They can just search by tags. Uh, there's data classification, which is an automated object tagging out of the box. Uh, you might want to investigate that. So those, those really interest me. The other one is unstructured data. I read something that was actually frightening this uh, last weekend, that 80% of data that's coming in is going to be unstructured. And we have to find ways of addressing that data and allowing our business consumers to merge the content with our structured and semi-structured data, because that's the future. And these are things like Word documents, PDFs, it's images, uh, sensor data, video, uh, all those kind of things, they're coming at us thick and fast, faster than we can assimilate. So tooling around those is really important to me. Yeah, the unstructured one was an interesting one. I mean, we worked together on that. I think for those of you who don't know, uh, a lot of that went into preview. Some of it's now in GA. There's also a tie to Snow Park, which, uh, which Eva mentioned. But I think the way you went about uh, assessing the uh, unstructured when it was in, uh, in preview was quite interesting. You, you work in a highly regulated uh, organisation, so you picked an interesting use case, but one where you wouldn't necessarily have to get quite so many boxes ticked to prove the capability. So maybe that's another thing that people can consider you know, when you're first trying Snowflake out and you're just getting to know it, pick a, it's back to what you said before, pick a use case that's got value, but pick one that's not going to have the blockers that means it's six months before you can really try it. And I think the, uh, certainly, like I, I agree with you, you know, uh, us who are on the inside, you know, we have a lot of keeping up to do with the, the features that are, uh, are coming thick and fast. And it's great that they're lining up with some of your priorities. So mm -hmm. I guess with that, uh, thanks. I don't know if you've got any closing comments or uh, you've, got to, you've got to earn your money today. You're on the panel. Oh, so, thanks uh, a bunch. <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah. So uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for sharing your insights. And uh, again, thanks for the, you know, the last couple of years. It's been, uh, it's been fun, it's been challenging, but hopefully you, know, you can crack on with that, uh, with that snowflake journey. Yeah, okay. I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, thanks Andy. Andy. Cheers.